Good afternoon and welcome to our worship service here at Showalter Villa on this hot July day. It's good to have you with us. We have a special service planned today and we are so glad that you are here in the chapel and watching in your homes and those who are joining us tomorrow on uh, Facebook. Thank you for joining us. Um, you might notice that we have a different order of worship. You have almost a booklet there in, in front of you. For those who would like to follow the liturgy, um, it's easy to follow and hear and see what we're saying. So uh, we'll try to guide you through on what page we'll be at. Um, you might notice that we are taking communion today and many of you are here for that. If you are receiving communion in your home, it will be shortly after it's served here. So we will get to you probably around 4, 4.15 perhaps, just so you know what to expect. Well, we are here to worship God, to celebrate God's love and faithfulness, we're here to sing together, and thank you to Clara Karekis for being our accompanist in the month of July. We really appreciated your music and for leading us into worship today. We're here to have celebrate the Lord's feast together and fellowship together and remember Jesus' love. You are also invited to join us immediately following the service to a cookie reception a farewell reception for our chaplain, Gary Blaine, who has been here for two years and is retiring on Friday. So it's a bittersweet time for me. I'm excited for you, Gary, and also sad to complete our work together. So um, we want to celebrate you today and also wish you well, and we'll have a time of prayer for Gary, as well as celebrate Anita Yoder Kerr, our uh, next chaplain, and we will have a time of prayer for her in this service as well. So it's a fun day to be together and worship. Well, I believe we're ready to begin. Um, I would invite you to turn to the first page on the back of your booklet. There is a call to worship there. I will read the light print and you can join me on uh, the bold print. So this is on the back of your first page. Our call to worship. Come, let us kneel and worship the Lord. Let us bow before God, our maker. Today, God will be our God who chooses a people and tends them, whose hand will guide us like sheep if we will only heed God's voice. Let's turn to page 564 in our hymnals, Let Us Break Bread Together, number 564.
Good afternoon. My name is Anita Kerr, and I've been grateful to be here for about a week and a half now and to learn from Gary, uh, whose ministry we will be celebrating today. Before we go to our community prayer, I want to just share with you uh, the residents who have passed away in the last week. Eddie Conrad at East Terrace died a week ago today, and her family has uh, not yet chosen to have a memorial service. James Reimer of North Meadows passed away on Saturday. His memorial service will be this Friday at Heston Mennonite Brethren Church. And James was the father of Brian, who works on the Showalter Villa maintenance team, and the grandfather of Rebecca Reimer, who also works here at the villa. And then uh, Gilbert or Dib Cohen of West Gardens passed away this Sunday, and his memorial service will be this coming Sunday afternoon at Whitestone. So let us go to prayer. Our God, we gather today in the circle of your love and mercy, and so we also gather in gratitude. Thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ who sustains us. Thank you for the gift of all those who offer the presence of Christ in this community. Especially we thank you for the ministry of Chaplain Gary Blaine in these years for his depth and width of knowledge, for his creativity, and for his steadfast care in the most difficult season of COVID. Bless him with the knowledge of work truly well done. Today, we also give thanks for the lives of Hetty Conrad, Gib Cohen, and James Reimer, who passed from this life in the past week and are now safe in your presence. We give thanks for this community, which is Showalter Villa. Please sustain each one with what they need as they work and serve and live here. We do gather today in gratitude, O oh God, and look forward to our participation at the table of your love and mercy shown to us so clearly through your Son, Jesus Christ. And so we pray using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For our gospel reading, I'll be reading Luke 6, 35 through 36, and this is in your booklet on the back of page 1. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. I want to say thank you for being here this afternoon. That is the real blessing for me today. I want to say thank you for the privilege that has been mine over the last two years to serve here. I want to thank Treva for being such a uh, gracious uh, executive and soul friend. Thank you, Treva. I want to thank um, Jill Schmidt Weaver. Uh, I have said before, and she doesn't believe me, so you tell her from here on out, of all the associates, 
partners, co-ministers I've ever served with in 46 years. You are the best. <laughs> and welcome, Anita. It's been my privilege to be with you these last 10 days, and I know that this community is in good hands under your leadership, and, and thank you. I want to... Uh, I want to also welcome my wife, Mimi Leo. She's back in the corner. If you read Fresh Bread, she's the one that uh, keeps Soggy Bottom in good stead. And I want to welcome Pastor Peter Hartman here today. Both are going to help us serve. Peter and I come from different perspectives, but our hearts are bonded in Christ's love. And so thank you, Peter, for the privilege that has been mine to, to serve with you. You know this. So, and Walt, you help me out here. Let's begin this time of word with this song. It's one I sang, we sang, the first sermon I delivered here as your lead chaplain. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit Siddhartha Gautama, known to most of us as the Buddha, taught this in his profound book of wisdom, the Dhammapada. Look how he abused me and beat me. Look how he threw me down and robbed me. Live with such thoughts and you will live in hate. Abandon such thoughts and live in love. In this world, hate never yet dispelled hate only love dispels hate yes. this is the law ancient and inexhaustible love dispels hate and anger the need for revenge fear and every other act of evil and trauma perpetrated against any one of us this truth is found in literature throughout the world. And despite the veracity of this truth that only love dispels all that is evil, we scarce believe it. In fact, we sincerely doubt it. It is hard for us to imagine that loving our enemies and doing good to them Without any expectation of reward, it seems preposterous, unbelievable, impossible, unrealistic, naive. Christians have sung hymns about the love of God for centuries. Sermons on the love of God are beyond count and prayers offered in the name and the love of God have no measure. The Old Testament offers 250 verses on the compassionate love of God. In the New Testament, there are no less than 13 verses that proclaim God is love, and we in turn must love one another. And people ask me, but don't you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and personal Savior? And my response is, that's the wrong question. The Jesus Christ question is, do you love the Lord your God with all of your heart and mind and soul, and do you love your neighbor as yourself? That is the heart of the Christian gospel. Yet, I dare say, it often finds little expression in contemporary Christianity. 
And I think it is so seldom practiced because we really doubt that love is efficacious and not in the least bit capable of countering evil. The story is told of a marauding band of Teutonic knights who attacked a small town mostly populated by a community of Jews. The knights settled into a large mansion that was both the home of the mayor and the town hall. Immediately, the chief of the knights forbade the Jews to trade outside the boundary of the town. Within weeks, they were reduced to near poverty. Food became scarce. Winter began to set in as disease haunted the hungry community. The knights refused the Jews the coal they needed to cook and warm their homes. They began to break up furniture, tear down fencing to cook and warm their houses. They began and soon found out that their food stores had been dwindled to nothing but rotting potatoes. Children and elders began to die of malnutrition. The people turned to the rabbi and asked what he might do to help them. The rabbi put on his best overcoat and hat. He trudged up the path to the mansion. Nervously, he grasped the door knocker and hit the strike plate. He could hear the sound of loud voices and laughter and smell food. A gruff soldier opened the door. And with fear in his voice, the rabbi begged to speak with the chief knight. The soldier commanded the rabbi to wait outdoors and disappeared into the den of smoke and noise. Soon the soldier reappeared, motioned the rabbi to follow him. And as they entered the hallway, the rabbi could see a banquet table laden with a roasted deer. Platters were stacked high with loaves of bread. Bowls teemed with piping hot potatoes, roasted carrots and cabbage. Tureens overflowed with a, all manner of soups, flagons brimmed with beer and glasses sloshed with red wine, and plates were stacked with apples and pears. Large cakes and pies were being carted into the hall. The rabbi was so hungry he nearly fainted from the rich aroma of food. The riotous talk and the laughter turned into glaring silence. The soldier pushed the rabbi onto his knees. What do you want? demanded the chief knight as they stomped from the head of the table to tower over a tiny little rabbi. I have come for my people, stated the rabbi. They do not have food to eat. They do not have coal to cook and eat their homes with. Their clothes and blankets are threadbare. My people need medicine and they need to be able to trade outside our neighborhood and small town. I beg you, sir, what will you do for my people? The chief snarled and reared back and punched the rabbi with the full force of his right fist. The old man was knocked to the floor, glasses shattered, and teeth clattered across the floor. His lips and nose bled profusely. The room spun, and it took him several minutes to catch his breath. Blood flowed down into his beard. With every effort, he was finally able to get back onto his feet. Thank you, sir, said the rabbi. And now I beg you, what will you do for my people? After World War II, 
investigators questioned Nazi leadership for several months before the Nuremberg trial began. The Nazi officers reported that they were mystified by the people of the Scandinavian countries, Denmark, Finland, Sweden, Norway. Yes, there were armed resistance groups that fought the Nazis. But the general population itself was, it was self-deprecating and non-confrontational. They practiced what Gandhi would call non-violent or passive resistance. They did not cooperate, but they did not violently oppose the Germans. The assumption is that more lives were saved through their passive resistance than would have been through oppression. No doubt, they were in the fell clutches of an evil force, but their pacifism saved many of them. That is what Gandhi called soul force. The power of love, the primary tool of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr in his struggle against segregation and the evils of racism in the Jim Crow South. Dr. King declared, but the end, the end is reconciliation. The end is redemption. The end is the creation of the beloved community. It is the type of spirit and this type of love that can transform opponents into friends. The type of love that I stress here is not eros, a sort of aesthetic or romantic love, not philia, the sort of reciprocal love between personal friends, but it is agape, which is understanding goodwill for all human beings. It is an overflowing love which seeks nothing in return. It is the love of God working in the lives of people. This is the love that may well be the salvation of our civilization. The power of love over evil and trauma-centered faith has a firm grasp on the reality of evil. As I look around the world today, Many of the institutions of evil that I have briefly described are still at work, gaining strength. I think of the ob obvious ones, fascism and racism, sadly in the form of white Christian nationalism, but also unbridled capitalism with its fondness of profit over people, and the creation of artificial needs, the plundering of the planet, and the indifference to climate change. If we truly believe that God is love, do we have any other obligation but to rise up in God's sustaining grace, which makes it possible to triumph over evil? Finally, it does not matter if you're a liberal progressive or a born-again Christian. Muslim or Hindu, Jew or Buddhist, agnostic or atheist, every human being on the planet is called to compassion if any one of us is to have a future. If any one of us is to avoid a trauma we have yet to imagine. It will not be military power and certainly not power politics that will save us. Compassion is the vehicle that will carry us over evil. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel declared, a religious man or woman is a person who holds God and man in one thought, at one time, at all times, who suffers harm done to others, whose greatest passion is compassion, whose greatest strength is love and defiance of despair. Love has the power to triumph over evil. Love has the power to heal the traumas we have inflicted on one another. 
Love is the power of God's justice and righteousness. It is there for us to live in our relationships with every human being we meet, no exceptions. Love is God's compassion, restoring our souls and mending the wounds of trauma we have too long endured. Now the next step for us to trust the power of love over evil. We must risk it. Will we never be hurt again? No. Will we never feel betrayed again? No. But I know of no other way for healing to begin. Now some might say, oh, I can't trust anybody anymore. Really? Did you visit the doctor? Or go to the dentist or allow repair people in your home? Do you send your kids or grandkids to school or sports organization or scouting activities? There are many whom we trust because our lives and our health depend on it. And may we suggest, may I suggest, that we trust God's way of compassion the way of self-giving love to heal and save the world. I encourage you to trust the ancient wisdom that only love dispels hate and fear and suffering and war's madness. I encourage you to trust the power of love over evil. Now that's what I call faith in the way of the cross. A trust in the Christ as Lord and Savior. Chaplain Gary for challenging us to love in the way Christ did, to have compassion and forgiveness. Let's move towards our communion service now. So I will invite you to turn to the back of your first page and we'll, I'll lead you in a prayer of confession. And um, you are welcome to read this prayer of confession in bold with me. And we'll move to the communion table now. Join me in this prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have, we have failed, failed to be love an obedient church. church. We, we have, have not done your will. will. We, we have broken your law. We, we have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. It is in the name of Jesus Christ we are forgiven. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. <laughs> It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and then join them in unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night that he gave himself up, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living <coughs> sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his love. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through you, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Bread for the journey and the cup of grace. Amen. Go in peace. We invite the servers to come forward. serve first our friends who need uh, a special diet. Thank you. I need a special diet too. <laughs>
Anita to come forward and retrieve it. Anita Kerr, we have come down to bless your hands for the work of Lee Chaplin at Showalter Villa. We hold up to you the concerns of our residents, their families, and villa employees, that they might be renewed, restored, and reawakened by the blessing of your hands. May you receive the strength offered by the Creator and the courage to persevere in times of stress and crisis. May all whose lives you touch Know the presence of God's grace and take great comfort in your hands of compassion. May the gift of God's Holy Spirit empower you for the ministry you have been chosen for. Amen.
name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, we'd like to offer a prayer of blessing for Chaplain Gary Blaine as he begins his retirement at the end of this week. Gary, thank you so much for your work here with Showalter Villa residents and staff. We have benefited and you have benefited us in helping to meet residents where they are and set further examples on how to do that. We thank you for your work in so many ways, including grief groups, poetry groups, Bible studies, psalms, devotions, and in helping with starting a Bluestem Ethics Committee. And the one-to-one -one Communications, the one-to-one -one connections have been so powerful throughout residents and staff. And we appreciate your, your investment here in that work. It's been a tremendous gift and we wish you many blessings as you begin your retirement. So Joe will offer the prayer of blessing. And I invite Anita and Kiva to surround Gary. Is it okay if we put our hands on your shoulders? Yeah, don't make me kneel. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting up. <laughs> you won't be able to get up if you kneel. I won't make you kneel. Okay. Right. Let's pray. God, Gary has been such a blessing to us. We have seen your gifts of love, wisdom, and acceptance flow from him these past two years, and we are so richly blessed. We thank you for his gifts of writing and preaching and for the many things we have learned from him and for the way that our thinking has been challenged and stretched. We thank you for the many relationships that we have formed with Gary over these two years. And now we pray that during this time of transition into retirement, Gary will find rest, a reduction in pain, renewed energy, and a new vision for his future. We pray for abundant health, abundant inspiration, and abundant time for writing. And we pray for time to connect with family and friends, for good times of fellowship and joy. May he know your deep peace, and may goodness and mercy follow him all the days of his life. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. I've been waiting for this for two weeks. <laughs> and we, we do want to remind you and invite you to join in the reception as soon as the service is over out here by Main Street. Well, I invite you to turn in your hymnals to number 523. God be with you till we meet again. 523.
mind, I offer you a blessing from Ephesians 3. I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have the power to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses all knowledge. May you be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to that God, be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>